There are many people out there that like to read the horoscopes, tea leaves, palm reading, tarot cards, all that sort of thing, as a way to get an idea of what the future holds for them and uh, hopefully make decisions accordingly. I think that's all a bunch of baloney. I don't go along with that kind of stuff. In fact, the church actually teaches against it for the basic reason that you're trying to gain uh, information about the future to which you're not privy to. And generally speaking, God is not too, uh, too keen on that idea. He, uh, he wants us to rely on his uh, providence and not worry so much about the future. Anyhow, what I'd like to do is instead of reading tea leaves, is I like to read the chips that my machines are producing and uh, what's happening at the cutting edge. And I've got a few samples here I'm going to show you. I've got one here. This one here, rather long and lanky chip there. It starts out very silvery gray here, proceeds to kind of a straw colored, and as the cutting process goes, no, notice that it's one continuous ribbon of a chip here. In fact, that's what I like to call these ribbon chips. It eventually turns to a brown color. And I don't know how well that's showing up. It turns brown, and then it goes to purple, and somewhere along the way here, oh, we're still in the brown and purple stage here. Uh, here we go. Uh, the chips eventually progress to uh, light blue. This tells us a lot about what's happening at the cutting edge because metal by itself is generally, uh, when it's uh, fresh made and fresh cut, is a silvery gray color. And as it heats up, it oxidizes, turns to a, a straw color, then a brown progresses to a purple and eventually reaches a blue stage. All of these give us an idea of the temperature that the metal is uh, experiencing right there at the cutting edge. Light straw will be about 400 degrees, brown about 500 degrees, purple 540, so it's a little hotter, until it gets to light blue uh, 640 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. If you keep pushing it, your metal will eventually begin to glow. And I've had that happen on me too. It begins to glow a, a deep uh, orange, uh, dark reddish color and eventually gets lighter if your tool gets really dull and you're really pushing it hard and uh, such as that. Uh, even to the point where if you're not careful, sometimes in some situations it'll actually catch fire. <laughs> and how that can be an experience, you don't want that to happen too often. Um, but I like to record uh, chips and I, I actually have a chip collection. I sound a little strange in that way I suppose but I like to have a chip collection going because this tells me uh, something about what's happening at the cutting edge and how my operations are going and it gives me an idea of uh, what to what I can learn from it in the future. Um, this ribbon chip happens to be a good example of the cutting edge there. The shiny edge is coming off the tool itself whereas on the other side that's where the chip crunches up on itself. Now you notice I handle these things pretty carelessly. It's actually not as careless as it looks. I've handled chips for 45 years and uh, you do get cut occasionally, but you learn how to respect them and how to t handle them rightly so that you do not get cut. Generally speaking, chips are pretty safe. And for myself, I know when to touch them, when not to and I know how to touch them and what not to. So consequently, these little digits are all still attached where they belong and I haven't lost any of them. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that I have a chip collection. I usually like to put my name on it and then I put the, uh, uh, I record all sorts of other information on there, such as the date, gives me an idea of who my employer was. You can put that down also. And I'll put the job number and operation, you know, if it's a milling operation, a turning operation, a threading operation, a drilling operation, whatever kind of operation it is, I'll put that on there. And of course, what kind of material I'm cutting, because the material makes a big difference. Steels generally look as what I just showed you there, but it can also look a bit different. Right here I have a chip that happens to be made out of 316 stainless, and if I can get the light to shine on that right, it retains much of its silvery color, but there towards the center it turns an interesting uh, kind of rose purple color. And that's because it's a, a stainless steel, so it's not going to oxidize quite the same. Uh, you get different color patterns out of uh, different sorts of steels. 
Um, okay, so I've got the operation. I also like to include the tool. If it's a high-speed steel tool, if it's a drill, if it's carbide, uh, cobalt high-speed steel, or whatever it is, I like to record the tool that I'm using, including its geometry, because that has a uh, that's a big factor in how the chips are formed and what's happening at the cutting edge. I'll also record my revolutions per minute, RPM, or more accurately, and generally a better uh, thing to record is your surface feet per minute, uh, SFPM. I also like to write down my depth of cut, DOC for short. I like to know how deep I'm going. And then uh, I include uh, inches per revolution if it's being done on a lathe. Uh, or perhaps a drill press, or my uh, inches per minute if it's a mill operation. Things are measured differently. You can uh, uh, calculate things out either way, depending. A lot of times our machines will tell us what we're running at. And then, of course, I like to include any coolant or lubricants uh, that I'm using because that makes a big difference on your tool life, the quality of the product that you're making, and how the chips come out. So while everyone's reading their horoscopes and tea leaves and what have you. Uh, I like to just look at the chips, understand them, learn about them, figure out what's going on, and move on from there. Incidentally, that reminds me of something. I'm always curious about how these other ideas work out. If you're into horoscopes, I would challenge you to take horoscopes from, well, someone here in the United States, someone over there in Europe, get one from China, get another uh, uh, source from Peru or somewhere in South America and see how well they all agree. And I don't think they will. With tea leaves, I don't know anything about reading tea leaves, but take all your tea leaves and, you know, put the water on the saucer and drop them on there or whatever, and then take a picture of it. And then do that, you know, again with another uh, dish, uh, another uh, supply of water and additional leaves and do that again five six seven a dozen times and see how often that comes out you know showing all the same thing that this is what you should do uh, today or tomorrow with the rest of your life or what have you and I would bet you anything there will be very very little consistency and what does that prove you it should prove to you that it's all a bunch of bunk so anyhow with that I'm gonna close Thanks for listening. God bless you.